Good evening. Happy Sunday to you. Happy the first Sunday of Advent 2024. Can you believe it's here? I mean, it's, oh my gosh, my the coming of Christ. Looking forward to his birth on the 25th. Um, can you believe time flies, man? Time, fly, time flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very, very happy to be here tonight. I'm very delighted, excited, elated, whatever word you want to use. But once again, welcome. The next topic is about, um, it's to reflect, it's about the endurance in the spirit. Endurance in the spirit is to reflect about everything that we've been, everything that we've done, every challenge we faced this year, uh, many obstacles we had to overcome, and yet we're still here, and it's because of the grace of God. He provided the endurance, He provided the strength, the support, the comfort that He can only give to all His children who trust in Him. And that's why the topic is all about tonight. And what better way to start this topic with the, the, with the season of Advent. So we're going to be doing a lot of reflection today on, on, a, on a, a particular uh, community that St. Paul uh, evangelized back in his day. And how, they were, how this community, they really took the word of God to the heart. They, they played no games, they played no jokes. Even though all the communities were talking about the, the, the testimonies of this particular community that we're going to talk about today in Mission Jove. So we're going to start again with the same on our faith in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for everything that we've been through this year, all the, all the challenges we had to face, health-wise, physically, mentally, spiritually. We know that you, you allowed this to happen in our lives to make us, to make us climb another step in the spiritual ladder. Now when we reflect back in the advent of 2023 to today, we know that we were able to overcome those obstacles because of your grace. Because the Holy Spirit that you poured down on us through the sacrament of baptism is acting constantly in our lives as long as we let it act in our lives. Because He is the Holy Spirit that provides all the charisms and gifts that you provided to us so that we could overcome whatever comes in front of us. And it's because the angel of the Lord, your angel, Lord, was coming, was, was ahead of us, really hurling, he was jumping all the hurdles, teaching us what to do and what not to do. That's what, that's what it's called, the gift of discernment. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything our family has been to, every, every opportunity that we had to evangelize, every opportunity that we had to give the testimony of Christ in our jobs or everywhere we've been to just to reflect the light of Christ, and more importantly, that we were the salt that provided the flavor for those people who are still not believing in you. We are that Bible, that walking Bible, that we are, we are exactly what you said to, to your apostles back in the day, that we are to be your, your witnesses, and that the power of the Holy Spirit will be upon us. Once again, we would like to thank you for Pope Francis. We ask you, Lord, that you illuminate his mind, his spirit, so that he continues, Lord, to, to stay firm in the doctrine of the Catholic Church. That we, we, I, we, we pray tonight for his soul so that he will be at peace, knowing that a lot of Catholics around the world, more than 1.2 billion, are praying for him so that we will stay firm in the, in the teachings of Christ. We pray tonight, especially for all our priests around the world, all the bishops, all the seminarians, all the, the young people who are, who are right now um, registering for the, for the vocation or religious life, whether it's priesthood or, or becoming a nun or, or even a, a, a friar. Again, Lord, we thank you for calling out your young people. And you, we thank you for the strength, for the spiritual strength that you provide to your priests, to your bishops. Thank you for them because they work so hard to make sure that they shepherd the flock that you left in charge of them on your behalf. We pray tonight for all these people who have family members who passed away most recently. We ask the Lord that you provide the, the comfort, that you are there, that you, I know that, though we know you're there, we ask the Lord that you illuminate these people's hearts so they will realize that in their most painful moment or in this moment of pain, you are very close to them and you have not abandoned them. Once again, Lord, we gotta pray <coughs> for the people who are in the hospital, who are going through a very difficult illness, and yet it's your mighty hand, the power of your hand, who's able to 
heal their spirits and as long as your will, their body. Another prayer tonight for all the communities around the world, all the Catholic communities, whether it's from the Legion of Mary, whether it's for the renewal of the spirit, whether they become because of the oblation of the divine love or divine mercy. Many community, Catholic communities around the world, we ask you, Lord, that you continue to pour down your spirit upon them, that they will reflect on what, they had, or what to do next in the upcoming year, to continue to fish more men and women and bring them back to the church. How important that is, Lord, for these communities to keep their hearts open to you. Another prayer, Lord, tonight, for all the coordinators and sub-coordinators, all the people who are part of these communities, who are tired, who are exhausted, who have seen so much, who, who they get disappointed when they see the lack of response of the community. Yet, Lord, I ask you tonight that you throw the log, that you fire the log in their, in their hearts so that it will again fire up and they will be enthusiastic, ready, ready to move on and to do the will of you, your will, Lord. And on that last prayer, Lord, I want to pray for Mission Joven, for everybody who's been through this program this year. We're alive because it's your will. We're able to walk because it's your will. We're able to see because it's your will. But more important is because you let us see the mighty hand, how you, how you move every day in our lives. We notice, Lord, when I hear the, the, the chirp of the birds, it's you singing to us. When I hear the, 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 the movement of the leaves, the breeze, the wind, I know it is you, Lord, giving us a, a kiss on the, in, our, in our cheek. And more importantly, when I see the sun illuminating the sun down to, to earth, it is you, Lord. It's your light upon us because it's your love. It's because you want us to know that you are there everywhere. It's just because our eyes are open to you. And what tonight, I ask you, Lord, that through us, through Mission Joven, wherever we reach, whichever, whichever town we reach up to, that they will be moved and touched their hearts, especially for the coming of Christ in the, sun, in, the, in the season of Advent, that their hearts will be moved, their hearts of stone will become hearts of flesh, and they will renew their covenant with you, Lord, because it's you, you're alive. And it's because of your love beyond human understanding. Thank you for this year. Thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. And more importantly, thank you for the peace that you provide in our hearts despite all challenges we've been up against. And we want to pray tonight for Reggie and for Drew, who are always very active, who are always enthusiastic about Mission Joven, for the support. I ask you, Lord, that you bless them according to your will. And Mother, Holy Mother, we want to call you in Mission Joven because when you come, just as Elizabeth said, who am I to receive the Mother of, of the Messiah? We want to call you, Mother, in Mission Joven by saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, grace. The, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners, now, now in the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. And Mother, thank you for your intercession, for your prayers. And we are looking forward to the revival of the Eucharist in the United States in the coming year through 2025. We cannot wait to see that happen. Amen. 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 The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Hey, you talk about, what, you know, today's readings center around Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the citizens of Thessalonica. I always like that name, <laughs> Thessalonica. I mean, and, and so you, you, you talked about uh, perseverance and endurance. I don't think there's anyone in the New Testament, other than Christ, you know, I mean, who has endured as much as, we're going to read about some of the things that, that Paul had endured. So if you're, you're looking for the endurance, and then he, his letters are like telling the people to persevere, to hang on. We taught you correctly. False God, false prophets may come amongst you, but don't worry about that. All right, just stay the course. And really, that's that's what Advent's all about: is staying the course to recognize that we have a birth coming up. We have someone that's coming into our lives, the Savior, who has been our our greatest advocate. Dice hermano que en este programa de día de hoy es sobre la 
eh, sobre cómo, cómo vencer los obstáculos y sobre todo que estamos en la temporada del Adviento, que comenzamos el día de hoy, domingo, y cómo, cómo, cómo el apóstol Pablo le habló a una comunidad de, de Tesalónica, de, de, de los tesalonicenses, y cómo, cómo les, les enseñaba las Escrituras, y cómo ellos perseveraban, y cómo ellos apoyaban, y, y, se, y se reconfortaban, y se consolaban. Es decir, ellos mantenían su visión fija en Cristo Jesús, y como dice el hermano, ahora que estamos en la temporada del Adviento, que viene el Mesías, el Cristo, el, 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 el Salvador, que realmente fue realmente el aquel que nos, nos, nos abrió las puertas del cielo. Y qué bonito que podamos abrir este programa el día de hoy con este tema de lo que es venciendo los obstáculos a través de ese apóstol Pablo en la comunidad de Tesalónica. Este tema el día de hoy es este primer domingo de Adviento y reflexionamos en todo lo que hemos vivido, todo lo que hemos hecho en este año. Le agradecemos a Dios por todo lo que ha hecho, por todos los obstáculos que hemos, que hemos tenido que, que, que enfrentarnos. Pero el día de hoy el Señor, el Señor renueva sus, sus, sus alianzas, renueva sus promesas contigo, renueva su corazón para que esta noche, en este programa, tú salgas ungido y bendecido a través de este tema que vamos al día de hoy. Muy bien, so we begin. Yeah, hey, begin, yeah. So we begin to the second letter of Thessalonians, yep. second letter of Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, 11 to 12. Again, second letter to Thessalonians, chapter 1. Versos 3 to 5 y 11 to 12. Según el Tesalonicenses, según el Tesalonicenses, capítulo 1, versículo del 3 al 5 y del 11 al 12. El 3 al 5 y del 11 al 12. Our friends, we must thank God at all times for you. It is right for us to do so because your faith is growing so much and the love each of you has for the others is becoming greater. And that is why we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God. We boast about the way you continue to endure and believe through all the persecutions and sufferings you are experiencing. All of this proves that God's judgment is just as a, and as a result you will become worthy of his kingdom for which you are suffering. Verses 11 to 12. That is why we always pray for you. We ask, uh, we ask our God to make you worthy of the life he has called you to live. May he fulfill by his power all your desire for goodness and complete your work of faith. In this way, the name of our Lord Jesus will receive glory from you and you from him by the grace of our God and of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Hermanos, siempre tenemos que dar gracias a Dios por ustedes. Como es justo que hagamos porque la fe de ustedes está creciendo y el amor que cada uno tiene por los otros es cada vez mayor. De modo que nosotros mismos hablamos de ustedes con satisfacción en las iglesias de Dios por la fortaleza y la fe que ustedes muestran en medio de todas las persecuciones y aflicciones que sufren. Eso es una señal del justo juicio de Dios y muestra que Él nos ha juzgado dignos de entrar en su reino por el cual están sufriendo. Versículo 11 al 12. Con este fin, oramos siempre por ustedes, pidiendo a nuestro Dios que les los haga dignos del llamamiento que les hizo y que cumpla por su poder todos los buenos deseos de ustedes y los trabajos que realizan movidos por su fe. De esta manera. El nombre de su Señor Jesús será honrado por causa de ustedes y Él los honrará conforme a la bondad de nuestro Dios y el Señor Jesucristo. Palabra de Dios, te alabamos, Señor. Paul is really thanking them for, I mean, it's, how, how do you go from wor worshiping idols to all of a sudden worshiping this man who you don't know who died and was risen in three days? I mean, the, the community of Thessalonica was set to, you know, there's a God for war, there's a God for love, there's a God for family, there's a God for everything. But, and how do you come along and say, well, there's one God, and this one God came along and gave his only son because man was sinning, and this is the only way to bring man back from sin. I mean, a extremely novel idea. And so it's very hard for the people to, so he really appreciates the fact that those people were able to change their lives And he, and, he, and he says here, the Holy Spirit's working through them. I mean, he doesn't say the word spirit in here, but it has to be the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is working through them. And so he is just offering so much praise for basically them hanging in there. Dice, hermano, que 
vemos en la introducción de esta lectura que el apóstol Pablo le da gracias a Dios por esta comunidad, por esta perseverancia que están teniendo. Y como dice bien el hermano, eh, traduciendo desde eh, la iglesia al español, voy a con lo que he dicho con, palabra por palabra, dice, él dice, ¿cómo es posible que una, una comunidad de Tesalónica, una comunidad que tenía un Dios para cada, Dios del amor, el Dios de la familia, el Dios de la guerra, es decir, tenían un Dios para cada, para cada eh, situación en su vida, ¿sí? Unos, y, y que, y, que lo consideran, lo llaman ídolos, lleguen a creer, lleguen a, a cambiar esos ídolos por realmente, por un solo Dios, aquel que dio la vida en una cruz, aquel que realmente murió, que vino para, para redimir a la raza humana, y, cómo, y que nos redimió sobre todo del pecado, ¿no? nos, 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 nos arrancó el pecado original. Entonces, imagínense ustedes el apóstol Pablo predicando el evangelio de esta comunidad, y ellos recibieron este mensaje, y no solo lo recibieron, sino que, no, que lo hicieron carne en su vida, y por lo tanto dice la palabra, como dice bien el hermano, nos dice aquí traduciendo, dice que llegaron a creer en el único Dios que realmente murió en una cruz para la salvación de la vida raza humana. You know, I mean, these people who have accepted the word here, I mean, they're considered outcasts. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, you know, like someone today that we would just like, I don't want to say shun, but we, we just don't show any respect for, you know, whether it's... Uh, Like, like a drug addict, you know, where, you know, they're really trying to get their light, but they're just, they're just not making it. You know, someone who, like we say, oh, a drug addict, or, some, you know, someone, oh, a criminal, or, or whatever like that, they get no respect. And so they're basically being picked on, if you, if you want to think about it. And so he's telling them that, you know, to be strong. God is calling you, and God will give you the strength to w endure whatever you need to do. But they get no respect. And so he's, this letter is basically... You know, it's trying to be a motivational letter in a sense of like, it, it, it's okay. The calling is worthy of the suffering that you're receiving. And, and we as Catholics, boy, do we get a black eye in the press. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like the media is, is you know, the Catholic Church is, is just like, uh, you know, we're out of date. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know we, we, ha we stand for things that society, tell you, a lot of society totally disagrees with. I mean, and, and so we can go through the whole litany of lists, but in a sense, we're kind of like, you know, almost these outcasts too, where, you know, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of strength to go around, let's say, wearing rosary beads or something like that, an outward sign that you're a Christian, uh, you know, under, you know, under God's care. It's so, it, so I can really feel for these people who are, who are persecuted here. They literally are the outcasts, and Paul's trying to, you know, saying, keep your head up. Dice, hermano, que, que esta carta es una carta muy motivacional. Porque está, le está hablando a esta comunidad que está trabajando, el poder del Espíritu Santo está trabajando a través del apóstol Pablo para esta comunidad. Imagínense ustedes el poder del Espíritu Santo en esta comunidad, que ellos realmente reciben esta, 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 este, este mensaje y lo hacen una vivencia en sus vidas. Entonces serían, serían, como, los, serían como los rechazados, ¿sí? los rechazados de esos tiempos. ¿sí? O sea, ellos, ellos, esta comunidad no quería seguir siendo lo que la sociedad le pedía o la cultura, que le, el ambiente que, se, que vivían, les pedía cómo tenían que actuar. Y es como es hacer un ejemplo, como el día de hoy, que alguien haga un, un juicio, un mal juicio de una persona que tiene una adicción a la droga o una persona que ha cometido un crimen. Entonces, eh, eh, el apóstol Pablo le está, le está diciendo a, esta, a estas personas, aunque ustedes son rechazados y marginados, pues manténganse firme en las enseñanzas que han ustedes recibido de parte mía. Pues me he recibido de parte mía porque es lo que Dios me mandó a hacer a mí. Y que esta, esta comunidad lo, lo hizo, lo, lo tomó a pecho y lo, viví, y lo viví en carne propia una persecución continua. Porque eran los marginados de la sociedad. Entonces, hermano, dice, el día de hoy alguien puede hacer un mal juicio, un mal juicio de alguien que tiene una adicción a las drogas o una persona que tiene que cometido un crimen. Pero Dios les invita a esa conversión. Dios les invita a darse esa oportunidad de que, que vuelvan al corazón de Dios y que Dios tiene las puertas abiertas para cada una de esas personas. Y el día de hoy también somos los católicos. El ser católico el día de hoy es como ser los marginados porque tenemos una, una creencia viva de lo que Jesucristo nos dejó y que la sociedad no está de acuerdo. Está en desacuerdo con la, con la doctrina y con la enseñanza católica. Y nosotros como cristianos, usar un rosario o estar eh, eh, en nuestra fe, propagando nuestra fe o anunciando lo que creemos, somos realmente los marginados. ¿Por qué? Porque no estamos, no estamos llenando la, las expectativas 
que la sociedad tiene, o sea, digamos, la, 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 como dijo el hermano, eh, la, todo lo que tiene que ver con la, con, la, con, la, con la televisión, ¿no? Que no sea de acuerdo, eh, no, no, no la televisión, pero lo, la, 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 la que la gente escribe sobre lo, la, la, la fe católica. Entonces, realmente estamos viendo lo mismo, pero sin embargo, el apóstol Pablo dice, dice a esta comunidad, sigan creciendo, sigan, ad, sigan creyendo en Cristo y sigan adelante y no se desanimen. Y es lo mismo que el día de hoy nos dice a nosotros como católicos, adelante y no se desanimen. Uh -huh. you know, one, of the, one of the things I like in, in I think it's, re, in, uh, it's in verse, uh, verse 12 here, it's um, the idea of glorifying God. Uh -huh. I mean, if you're behaving correctly, you know, in Christian-like uh, manner, you should be glorifying God. And I like some priests and the Mass glorify God with your life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so maybe a way to think about your actions is like, you know, you said you're about to do something. Will God be glorified if, you know, if I do what I'm thinking about doing? Mm -hmm. If someone cuts me off, is God glorified when I'm on the horn on them? <laughs> yeah. Okay, not really. Okay, so, so, if, so, I mean, so what Paul is saying here is glorify God with your life. And so we really need to be thinking every action that we do, you know, you know and, and it, was, it was almost like, would your mother approve? You know what, you know what I mean? And, and so everything we do, we got to say, you know, is, is this furthering, you know, God's calling of love for one another or is this holding that back or am I withholding it at all? And so we really need to be, you know, when we call, call ourselves God's children, we really need to be glorifying God with our lives. And what, and what am I doing? Am I furthering God's uh, mission here on earth? Dice, pues, hermano, que, que, que cuando el apóstol Pablo habla de que todas las acciones que hacemos por medio, uh, por, por medio de, del Espíritu Santo para glorificar a Dios, tiene que ver que estamos o somos movidos por ese Espíritu Santo. Pero una vez más, el apóstol Pablo nos dice el día de hoy, nos invita a reflexionar justamente de temporada del Adviento. Es, es mis, 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 el día de hoy, mis, mis acciones, mi testimonio, mi forma de actuar, mi forma de pensar, realmente glorifica a Dios. Es, está extendiendo el reino de Dios donde me, donde me encuentro, o realmente está glorificando eh, otras cosas que no son de Dios, o, o, o está realmente dejando mucho que desear la crianza que recibí de, de mis padres o de mi madre. ¿Sí? Entonces, tenemos que pensar de que todo lo que hacemos como cristianos, como hijos de Dios, es, cada acción que tomemos de adelante es pensar, ¿estamos glorificando a Dios con esta acción? ¿O realmente estamos yendo en contra de, esa, de esta glorificación que Dios se merece? Porque Dios se glorifica en nuestras vidas, en lo que hacemos, en lo que decimos como cristianos. Como hijo de hermano, si alguien, si alguien está, estamos, estamos conduciendo y nos, cort, nos corta, nos, nos hace un gran corte, tocamos el claxon fuertemente, ¿eso es glorificar a Dios? Realmente no lo es. Entonces, pensar, pausar, reflexionar de cómo, cómo como cristianos tenemos que actuar para que Dios sea glorificado y que realmente no, que no lastimemos al prójimo, más bien que el prójimo se dé cuenta que a través del amor a Dios ellos también pueden alcanzar a Dios porque somos testi somos testimonios vivos del amor de Dios. Mm -hmm. I think we're ready to move on. Move on. Okay. Yeah. So now we go to the from Second Thessalonians. Now the next reading is please First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Yeah, one through eight. One through eight. Right. First so we're going from yep. chapter one verses two to eight. From the second letter to the first letter. Yes. Okay. So First Thessalonians chapter one verses two to eight. Vamos a ir ahora primera Tesalonicenses. En el capítulo 1, versículo del 2 al 8. Primero de Tesalonicenses, capítulo 1, versículo del 2 al 8. We always thank God for you all and always mention you in our prayers. For we remember before our God and Father how you put your faith into practice, how your love made you work so hard, and how your hope in our Lord Jesus Christ is firm. Our friends, we know that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own. For we brought to good news to you, not, not with words only, but also with the power and the, and the Holy Spirit, and with complete conviction of his truth. You know how we lived when we were with you. It was for your own good. You, initi you imitated us and the Lord 
And even though you suffer much, you receive the message with the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. So you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For not only did the message about the Lord go out from you throughout Macedonia and Achaia, but the news about your faith in God has gone everywhere. There is nothing then that we need to say. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Primera carta de Tesalonicenses, capítulo 1, versículo del 2 al 8. Primera de Tesalonicenses, capítulo 1, versículo del 2 al 8. Siempre damos gracias a Dios por todos ustedes y los recordamos en nuestras oraciones. Continuamente recordamos que activa ha sido su fe, que servicial su amor y que fuerte los sufrimientos, su esperanza en nuestro Señor Jesucristo delante de nuestro Dios y Padre. Hermanos amados por Dios, sabemos que Él los ha, los ha escogido, pues cuando nosotros les anunciamos el Evangelio, no fue solamente con palabras, sino que lo hicimos también con demostraciones del poder de Dios y la actividad del Espíritu Santo y con una gran abundancia de gracias. Bien saben cómo nos portamos entre ustedes buscando su propio bien. Ustedes, por su parte, siguieron nuestro ejemplo y el ejemplo del Señor Recibieron el mensaje con la alegría que el Espíritu Santo les daba en medio de grandes sufrimientos. De esta manera, llegaron a ser un ejemplo para todos los creyentes en las regiones de Macedonia y Acaya. Partiendo de ustedes, el mensaje del Señor se ha extendido, no solo por Macedonia y Acaya, sino por todas partes. Y se sabe de la fe que ustedes tienen en Dios, de manera que ya no es necesario que nosotros digamos nada. Palabra de Dios, te alabamos, Señor. Again, that must be Paul's favorite word is thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your faith. And one of the things, you know, I, I always remember the, uh, uh, the typical um, Corinthians reading in weddings, you know, about uh, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And I didn't realize it, but that's actually in, in, in here. This is like a precursor to that, where he, he talks about that they were... They were um, Uh, they were working in their faith. They were showing a um, a labor of love, and 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 they were hoping and they were hoping in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I didn't realize there's our there's our thing of faith, hope, and love right here, while he's thanking the Thessalonians for for what they're doing. So I thought that was that was very interesting because I always remember it from from Corinthians, yes. but it seemed so. You could say that that's also a, a pattern of Paul is talking about faith, holding on to faith. Are you living a life of love, and are you hoping in the in the constancy and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ? Dice hermano que cuando leyó esta lectura bíblica le vino a la mente a través del Espíritu Santo le vino la carta a los Corintios cuando habla sobre que hay tres virtudes teologales que son en la fe, la esperanza y el amor y el más grande de todos es el amor. Y vemos aquí que el apóstol Pablo vuelve a agradecer pasándole pasándonos en esa en esa lectura bíblica que es como una 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 precursora de este, de, este, de, este, de este versículo bíblico, donde el apóstol Pablo le agradece a esta, a esta comunidad por su perseverancia, primeramente por su fe, por compartir su fe. Segundo, por tener la esperanza en la venida del Señor Jesucristo, en su segunda venida. Y tercero, por el amor que tienen entre ellos mismos y el amor que sale de ellos hacia las personas. Entonces, qué bonito que el apóstol Pablo eh, agradece a esta comunidad por haber hecho, haber hecho que esta palabra, este, esta, este evangelio, predicado a ellos, proclamado a ellos, realmente eh, se, eh, creció en ellos, hizo carne, hizo carne fru fructuosa. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Paul is, is writing this to the people who were chosen. And if you're partaking of this program, you're chosen. For some reason, you're here, <laughs> right? I mean, there, there, there's a calling. There's, there's a spirit that says, hey, I'm, I'm here watching this program on a Sunday night when I could be watching the football game, you know, or, or whatever, okay? So, I mean, we're chosen. We just have to realize that you know we're being called, right? And so what, what Paul is saying here is God is calling the Thess you know, the part of the Thessalonians that you know took the word, but it's also calling you and calling us. Mm -hmm. Right. Dice hermano que cuando vemos habla sobre que este pueblo de Tesalonia, de, de Tesalonia fue escogido por Dios, pues ustedes también han sido escogidos, como dice él, hermano, eh, de que si ustedes están, están viendo este programa un domingo por la noche. Y cuando pudieron estar viendo un partido de fútbol, entonces, ¿qué pasa? Es porque Dios también te ha escogido, porque no es coincidencia, es porque Dios tiene una misión para ti, 
quieres, tiene una misión para ti y tiene una misión para mí y tiene una misión para él, para todos nosotros. Y exactamente, Dios nos ha escogido a nosotros para cumplir una misión en esa tierra. ¿no? You know, and, and it's, it's a tough calling. I mean, because um, this is a world where it's an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and we're supposed to turn the other cheek. I mean, we're supposed to forgive seven times, 70 times. I mean, you know, we're supposed to forgive all time. And, and it's, and it's, I mean, just like as Christ, as Christ was, his, how foreign his message was at his time, it's a somewhat foreign message here where, you know, where, you know, get the other guy before the other guy gets you type thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and so, you know, we're called to a labor of love. And that's why these Thessalonians, you know, the people, you know, they suffered, they suffered greatly through their afflictions. Luckily, we have the Holy Spirit to say, hey, endurance, keep going, be patient. The Lord is coming, our Advent season here. And so one of the things that we have to do is we have to be patient. I mean, we're going to suffer because of our calling, because you were chosen, because Christ is talking to you, the Holy Spirit was, is within you. You're going to have a tough time with that, or people will have a tough time with you, but you have to hang in there. There's, the Spirit is with you, and Paul is thanking them for the fact that they're, that they're overcome these obstacles that people have thrown in front of them. Dice que a medida que es, es, ese llamado que Dios nos hace es un llamado, es un llamado, una invitación muy, muy, muy grata y a la misma vez dura, dura para, la, para el raciocinio humano, porque en este mundo, como dice el hermano, es, está basado en ojo por ojo, diente por diente. Yo te hago, tú me haces. Entonces, cuando somos llamados a este camino del Señor, como, porque todos somos escogidos, vamos a cumplir una misión y esa misión vamos a pasar realmente muchas pruebas que nos va que nos va a resultar en crecer en la, en, 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 en la paciencia mucho mucho sufrimiento que nos va a dar la fortaleza espiritual para poder vencerlos en, para poder vencerlos no con las fuerzas humanas no con las a través del poder del Espíritu Santo que mora en nosotros también nos va nos va a permitir permitir experimentar no solamente el amor al prójimo sino el mismo amor que fluye de Dios de, a través de nosotros a través a otras personas pero es importante que sepamos de que a pesar de las pruebas que vivimos el día de hoy en este mundo, a pesar de las dificultades que tenemos, sabemos que Dios nos ha dado una misión y esa misión tenemos que cumplirla por amor y por convicción, porque Él es quien nos mueve, Él es quien nos, nos, Él quien nos, nos apoya, Él quien está siempre constantemente protegiéndonos para poder cumplir esa misión. Pero, por supuesto, vamos, vamos a tener pruebas, dificultades, vamos a, ser, vamos a ser retados por otras personas que están de acuerdo con nosotros. Pero lo importante es que sepamos de que siguiendo a Jesucristo, siguiendo sus enseñanzas, manteniéndonos firmes en la fe, vamos a poder vencer todo obstáculo que sea fe de nosotros. Y, que, y te agradecemos a ti, hermano y hermana, que está viendo el programa esta noche, porque Dios también te ha escogido a ti, me ha escogido a mí, me ha escogido a hermano. You know, Paul goes on to call these people, this tight core of people who have taken the word on, who have, you know, have listened to the call of God. And by the way, God's calling all the time. It's just, is your heart open to receiving God? And so these people have opened their hearts, and he calls them model believers. It's just like word has spread how that how you're, you're such a true Christ-like community here. And, and I'm going to, you know, Paul, forgive me, I'm going to change these words here because he talks about all throughout Macedonia and Achaia. Well, I'm going to change it to all throughout southeastern Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, we, we need to realize that, okay, there is a Macedonia and there isn't an Achaia, but this is now. Southeastern Connecticut, you are a model believer, and so we need you. I mean, we need you on board with God's calling. So don't be afraid. I mean, it's going to be a tough haul in the sense that the world will not like you for what you're doing. Okay, but you will be this model believer here in southeastern Connecticut. We can change things here. Dice hermano que al ver esta 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 lectura, pues dice que esta que esta 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 comunidad católica cristiana eh, del apóstol que el apóstol Pablo evangelizó, pues ellos no solamente eh, hicieron carne esa palabra, sino que ellos eran unos unos modelos de creyentes. Y ese modelo creyente, a través de su fe, de su amor, de su esperanza, se propagó por, por regiones lejanas, llamadas de Macedonia y Acaya. Y el hermano dice, el día de hoy, eso somos tú y yo en el día de hoy. Ya no solamente es Macedonia y Acaya, sino es, es, es el, 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 el sudeste de Connecticut, el sudeste de este estado de Connecticut, el que, el que está llamado a responder a ese llamado de Dios. Porque Dios, dice hermano, nos llama todos los días, 
pero es cuestión de que nuestro corazón se abra a, a esa misericordia de Dios para que podamos recibir esa gracia de su Espíritu Santo, para poder actuar de acuerdo a esa misión que Dios tiene con nosotros y poder vencer esas pruebas. Es decir, el día de hoy, esta palabra es para nosotros, es viva, es fuerte, hace carne, y nos invita a nosotros realmente a ser unos modelos también de creyentes. Necesitamos personas como tú, personas que quieran realmente actuar ese llamado de Dios y que seamos modelos de creyentes para la, para la gente que está afuera y vean realmente que es posible amarnos, que es posible ayudarnos, que es posible ser realmente unos, unos cristianos que seamos como otro Cristo en esta tierra. Es posible, si Dios lo hizo con, con la comunidad tesalónica, ¿Por qué no lo puede hacer con otros? Claro que sí. Y todo es porque es el poder del Espíritu Santo por su misericordia y por gracia. Hermano, hermana, ábrete a la acción del Espíritu Santo. Ábrete a este llamado que Dios te hace y tú también serás parte de este modelo de creyentes que somos aquí en el sudeste de Connecticut. I mean, so I like to remind people, you know, what does this mean in our, in our, in our lives? I mean, and, and really repeated the words, the three words earlier, faith, hope, and love. It's, an, it's not like you're standing on the street corner reading scriptures. Do you lead, do you lead a life of faith? Do you, prac, do you read the Bible every once in a while? Do you pray to God? Are you kind? Are you patient with people? Can you forgive people? And, and, if, and if, you, if you can do that, I mean, you are, I'll say, a model citizen, right? And that's what Christ is looking for is like, can you be the model citizen here where you will the good of others, that's the, that's the definition of love. I mean, so you want to you wanna be unique here in southeastern Connecticut? Try leading a faith of patient endurance, uh, of being truthful, of being kind, of helping people, you know, and of, and of letting this Holy Spirit and the call of God into your hearts. And then you will be a different person, and, when peop and people will say, I mean, because, you know, how do you affect other people's lives? It's not by lecturing at them, it's mm -hmm. by It's by example, leading a life of example. And so that's, what, that's what's being called here, and that's what Paul's praising the Thessalonians for. Dice, hermano, que vamos a ver ahora, mirando que el mundo te dice ojo por ojo, diente por diente, eh, yo te hago, tú me haces. Eh, eh, es realmente vivir en Cristo. Y vivir en Cristo significa de que realmente... Eh, vamos, a, vamos a ser probados, pero a la misma vez vamos a poder demostrar nuestra fe, nuestra esperanza y el amor, no con palabras, no, no parándonos en una esquina a, a predicar, sino que a través de nuestro ejemplo de vida, a, a través de nuestro testimonio de vida, las personas van a poder ver que somos realmente cristianos, que realmente estamos en serio en este camino. Si somos caritativos con los demás, si mostramos paciencia con los demás, si podemos soportar los sufrimientos con, con paciencia, sabiendo que a través del Espíritu Santo nos da la for, el don de fortaleza para poder, para poder vencer esos obstáculos, las personas mismas se van a dar cuenta de nuestro, de nuestro, de nuestro testimonio de vida. Y por eso que dice el hermano bien claro, la fe, la esperanza y el amor. Si somos capaces de hacer eso, de dar eso, pues realmente Cristo va a ser glorificado. Y se va a dar cuenta que somos auténticos, realmente modelos de creyentes, como dijo el apóstol Pablo a esta comunidad, no tengo nada más que decirles. Quiere decir que están viviéndolo a su plenitud. Y Dios desea que usted y yo en esta noche también podamos, podamos vivir esa fe, esperanza y el amor en toda su plenitud. Y que no dejemos que el ojo por ojo, diente por diente, el yo te hago, yo te hago, eso, 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 no, es, eso no es, eso no viene de Dios, eso es humano. Dejémonos mover por el Espíritu Santo para dejar que Dios actúe en nuestra vida y la vida de nuestros seres queridos. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to, further on in the Thessalonians, uh, I guess we're on Thessalonians 1, chapter 2. Yes. Yeah. So now, a couple uh, pages later. So now we're going to go to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, 8 to 13. 1 to 4, 8 to 13. Vamos a ir a 1 Thessalonicenses, capítulo 2, versículo del 1 al 4, y del 8 al 13, del 1 al 4, 8 al 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter, uh, verses 1 to 4, and then we jump from 8 to 13. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 al 4, 8 al 13. Our friends, you yourselves know that our visit to, to you was not a failure. You know how we had already been mistreated and insulted in Philippi before we came to you in Thessalonica. And even though there was much opposition 
our God gave us courage to tell you the good news that comes from him. Our appeal to you is not based on error or impure motives, nor do we try to trick anyone. Instead, we always speak as God wants us to, because he has judged us worthy to be entrusted with the good news. We do not try to please people, but to please God who tests our motives. Verses 8 to 13. Because of our love for you, we were ready to share with you not only the good news from God, but even our own lives. You were so dear to us. Surely you remember our friends, who, who, how we worked and toiled. We worked day and night so that we will not be any trouble to you as we preach to you the good news from God. You are our witnesses, and so is God, that our, that our conduct toward you who believe was pure, right and without fault. You know that we treated each one of you just as parents treat their own children. We encouraged you, we comforted you, and we kept urging you to live the kind of life that pleases God, who calls you to share in his own kingdom and glory. And there is another reason why we always give thanks to God. When we brought you God's message, you heard it and accepted it not as a message from human beings, but as God's message, which indeed it is, for God is at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord, Amen. thanks be to God. Um, ustedes mismos, hermanos, saben que nuestra visita a ustedes no fue en vano. Más bien, aunque como ya saben, antes habíamos sido insultados y maltratados en Filipos, Dios nos ayudó a anunciarles a ustedes su evangelio con todo valor y en medio de una fuerte lucha. Porque no estábamos equivocados en lo que predicábamos, ni tampoco hablábamos con malas intenciones, ni con el propósito de engañar a nadie. Al contrario, Dios nos aprobó y nos encargó el Evangelio. Y así es como hablamos. No tratamos de agradar a la gente, sino a Dios, que examina nuestros corazones. Versículos del 8 al 13. Así también les tenemos, les tenemos a ustedes tanto cariño que hubiéramos deseado darles no solo el Evangelio de Dios, sino hasta nuestras propias vidas. Tanto hemos llegado a quererlos. Hermanos, ustedes se acuerdan de cómo trabajamos y luchábamos para ganarnos la vida. Trabajamos día y noche a fin de no ser una carga para ninguno de ustedes mientras anunciábamos el Evangelio de Dios. Ustedes son testigos y Dios también de que nos hemos portado de una manera santa, recta e irreprochable con ustedes los creyentes. También saben que los hemos animado y consolado a cada uno de ustedes, como hace un padre con sus hijos. Les hemos encargado de que se porten como deben hacerlo, lo, como deben hacerlo lo que son de Dios, que los llama a tener parte en su propio reino y gloria. Por esto, de nuestra parte, damos siempre gracias a Dios, pues cuando ustedes usaron el mensaje de Dios que nosotros les predicamos, lo recibieron como mensaje de Dios y no como mensaje de hombres. Y en verdad, es el mensaje de Dios, el cual produce su, los, los resultados en ustedes lo que creen. Padre de Dios, te damos, Señor. So Paul is again, um, is again saying, thank you for accepting our message. We, we did, and we did it selflessly, we did it, we did it faithfully, we followed God's word, and basically thanking them, thanking them for accepting it. And thank you for yeah, judging us worthy that we should, um, you know, that, that we should look upon uh, his gift selflessly and, and, and something that should be accepted gratefully. And, and Paul is, is just very thankful for what he has done for, I mean, is thankful for what the Thessalonians have done with God's calling here. Dice, hermano, que vemos aquí que el apóstol Pablo está muy agradecido porque ese mensaje que, que el Señor puso en sus labios a esta comunidad fue bien recibido en los corazones de estas personas. Y debido a que fui recibido, no como mensaje humano, sino como mensaje del mismo Dios, pues esto hizo un gran efecto en esta comunidad. Y el apóstol Pablo está muy agradecido que ese mensaje que el Señor les trajo a ellos, ellos lo recibieron bien, con gratitud, con rectitud y en toda su verdad. You know, and Paul needed a pickup here, because Paul basically got run out of Philippi. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so he, he, so he comes, to, and this seems to be this theme all along is because he's preaching such a radical message is that he, so he arrives here and he's thankful that they've heard the word, they're thankful they're supporting him. Eventually Paul gets kicked out of Thessalonia too where they just said, hey, you, you know, to the point of like his life was threatened and he had, a, he had to leave town secretly in order to survive getting out of Thessalonica. So he thanks them for that. And he thanks them for the fact that, you know, that they believed devoutly and justly and, and blamelessly they took, the, they took the word of Christ in. And, Paul saying, you know, we treated you like family and you treated me like family and I, and I thank you so much for that. But Paul really was suffering like he does in all the places and so he is just very appreciative of how those who believe, who are those who God has chosen, who list, let God call into their hearts, has, wel has welcomed Paul and Silvanius and Timothy into, into their home, so to speak. Dice hermano que vemos aquí que el apóstol Pablo les dice a ellos Así como tuve que pasar una prueba dura en, en Filipos y tuve que dejar Filipos por pruebas duras y, y, su, y, y sufrimientos y persecuciones, ustedes me tomaron a mí como si fuéramos parte de su familia. Y al hacerme parte de su familia, yo también les agarré a ustedes cariño como parte de mi familia. Y aunque sabemos que el apóstol Pablo eventualmente también es expulsado de Tesalónica, eh, pero esta comunidad de creyentes, porque el apóstol Pablo llevaba un mensaje radical, como dice el hermano, pues exactamente, eso ellos lo tomaron a, a, a pecho en una forma devota, en una forma humilde. Fueron dóciles al llamado al Espíritu Santo y, y actuaron de acuerdo a ese mensaje. Y por lo tanto, la apóstol Pablo se siente, se siente, los aprecia mucha mente y dice, gracias, realmente gracias, porque ustedes me hicieron parte de su familia. Y yo los tomé a ustedes como parte de mi familia. O sea, o había una comunicación en el Espíritu de lo que es el amor, el amor de Dios que fluía de esa comunidad hacia el apóstol Pablo y el apóstol Pablo hacia ellos. Una, una, un amor en el Espíritu Santo. Qué hermoso que podamos ser testigos de lo que el apóstol Pablo les habla a ellos y cómo ellos respondieron. Y sin embargo, también se da aquí que el apóstol Pablo no fue una carga pesada para ellos. Al contrario, él también trabajó día y noche para poder subsistir, para no ser una carga pesada para ellos. Por, justamente porque sabía el apóstol Pablo que todo lo que él hacía, lo hacía en el nombre de Dios. Uh -huh. I think we're ready to move on. Okay. So second, now, back to the second letter. Second Thessalonians. So we're going to go back to the second Thessalonians. Again, second Thessalonians. Now you're no longer first. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Second Thessalonians. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1, 1 to 5. 5. Vamos yep. a ir a segunda de Thess 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 Thessalonicenses. En el capítulo 3, versículo 1 al 5. Segunda de Thessalonicenses, capítulo 3, del 1 al 5. Finally, our friends, pray for us that the Lord's message may continue to spread rapidly and be received with honor, just as it was among you. Pray also that God will rescue us from wicked and evil people, for not everyone believes the message. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and keep you safe from the evil one. And the Lord give us confidence in you and we are sure that you are doing and will continue to do what we tell you. May the Lord lead you into a greater understanding of God's love and the endurance that is given by Christ. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Por último, hermanos, oren por nosotros para que el mensaje del Señor llegue pronto a todas partes y sea recibido con estimación, como sucedió entre ustedes. Oren también para que seamos librados de los hombres malos y perversos, porque no todos tienen fe. Pero el Señor es fiel, y Él los mantendrá a ustedes firmes y los protegerá del mal. Y en el Señor tenemos confianza en que ustedes hacen y seguirán haciendo lo que les hemos ordenado. Que el Señor los ayude a amar como Dios ama y a, te, y a tener en el sufrimiento la fortaleza de Cristo. Palabra de Dios, te la vamos, Señor. Uh, this is the, basically the end of the second letter, and, 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 and Paul saying, pray for us. I mean, Paul will continue to suffer all these things that we're going to find out in Corinthians in the, in the next reading. I mean, so Paul, Paul's saying, hey, please pray for us. Uh, he's also saying, like, you know, and we're, we're, we will pray for you, but God knows your heart. 
God knows what's going on in your heart. And, and, and you may, you know, if, if you are like the world that says one thing and, and does another, it reminds me of the, of the gospel reading where the people are putting coins into the treasury mm -hmm. and people are giving of their surplus. And then the, the, the poor widow gives two small copper coins, but Christ correctly calls out that, you know, she really gave from her heart. Mm -hmm. She gave, you know, as, as if she was a true believer. And so that's what he's saying here is, you know, be confident that, that, that if you follow our instructions, be confident in the word and our instructions that we taught you. And direct your hearts towards God and you'll be okay. Dice que el apóstol Pablo ya se está despidiendo esta comunidad y les dice a ellos que oren por él y que él hará lo mismo por ellos. Que él le dice que ya Dios conoce los corazones de estas personas. Como esta palabra de Cristo, esta palabra de Dios, esta palabra hizo carne en ellos. Y el apóstol Pablo tiene la confianza de que a medida que ellos sigan creciendo como comunidad, que se sigan abriendo a la acción salífica del Espíritu Santo, pues ellos, ellos realmente van a seguir actuando de acuerdo a la voluntad de Dios. Es decir, el corazón de ellos ya está en Dios. Entonces, el hermano dice, una analogía de esa lectura es cuando vemos cuando los, los, los eh, fariseos llegan al templo de Jerusalén y, y ellos lo que dan son lo que les sobra, las monedas que les sobra. Pero llegó la viuda y da lo que estaba en su corazón, lo, todo lo que tenía era porque realmente era una, 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 una verdadera creyente de la fe judía. Entonces vemos aquí eso, ese corazón abierto. Pero el apóstol Pablo dice, oren por mí para que yo pueda seguir eh, llegando, estimando la buena nueva del Evangelio y aunque voy a pasar sufrimientos y persecuciones, oren por mí para que Dios me dé la fortaleza en mi sufrimiento por la causa de Cristo. Uh, there's an important thing in here. Paul says, um, pray for us because there are evil people out there, people who, who seek to take me off my message. And, and it's easy to forget, but I mean, in our world today is really, a, a, it's a battleground. It's a battleground mm -hmm. between the good and the bad, yes. the good spirits, the evil spirits, the, you know, the Christ and the devil. And we're the pawns, so to speak. You know, and, and so we're, we're the ones that, I mean, you know, this is the prayer to St. Michael, you know, that, that, that we say the, the archangels to protect us from the evil spirits and cast them back into hell. And so, you know, they were there 2,000 years ago, they're here today. And so it's not easy to be kind and faithful and patience and show endurance. The easy thing is to, you know, you know take advantage of the other person or whatever. I mean, and, and so... The same battles that Paul's fighting 2,000 years ago, we fight today because we're literally in a battle for our soul, mm -hmm. right? And because our soul's eternal. One, one, one being wants at the devil, and God wants us to join him forever. We need to have the Holy, you know, we need to incorporate the Holy Spirit into our lives so that we listen to the good and not the bad. Dice, hermano, que las batallas espirituales que tenía el apóstol Pablo hace más de 2,000 años entre el mal, entre el bien y el mal, son las mismas batallas que usted tenemos el día de hoy. Estamos en una batalla espiritual donde está el bien contra el mal, en, en el Cristo y el enemigo, el, el, el diablo. Es decir, es, es constante. Por lo tanto, tenemos que pedir al Espíritu Santo que guíe nuestros pensamientos, que guíe nuestro corazón, que guíe todos los proyectos que tenemos, pero para que sea Dios glorificado. Y de esa manera, nuestra, nuestra, nuestra alma, que es eterna, pues algún día también queremos eh, que esa alma de nosotros sea llena de Cristo, sea llena del Espíritu Santo y no realmente de las fuerzas del mal. Es fácil, es, es fácil actuar fuera del Espíritu, pero cuando se actúa con el Espíritu, se actúa para que Dios sea glorificado hoy, ayer, hoy y siempre. I don't know if you want to go to Romans or... Yeah, let's do, let's do Romans. Okay. So we're going to do Romans. Romans chapter, chapter 8. Chapter 8, yep. 35, 39 for the closing reading. Yep. Romans chapter 8, 35 to 39. Romans capítulo 8, versículo 35 al 39. Who, who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us, who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from the fruit of his love. 
neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. ¿Quién nos podrá separar del amor de, del amor de Cristo? El sufrimiento o las dificultades o la persecución o el hambre o la falta de ropa o el peligro de, o la muerte violenta. Como dice la Escritura, por causa tuya estamos siempre expuestos a la muerte. Nosotros estamos como ovejas llevadas al matadero. Pero en todo eso salimos más que vencedores por medio de aquel que nos amó. Estoy convencido de que nada podrá separarnos del amor de Dios, ni la muerte, ni la vida, ni los ángeles, ni los poderes y fuerzas espirituales, ni lo presente, ni lo futuro, ni lo más alto, ni lo más profundo, ni ninguna otra, ninguna otra de las cosas creadas por Dios. Nada puede separarnos del amor de Dios. Nos ha mostrado en Cristo Jesús, nuestro Señor. Palabra de Dios, te la vamos, Señor. So, before you begin, en la lectura anterior, el hermano habló sobre la importancia de la oración al, arc al arcángel Miguel. Por favor, hágalo siempre, siempre. Uh -huh. uh, hey, we're approaching the, the days of long, dark periods. And, and so it's sun sets before 4.30, rises at 7 o'clock. Should be some quiet time. Right, because in the quiet we, we, can, we can listen to the call of God. So I, I know we're, this is the Advent season. We're supposed to be reflecting. You started out the show, hey, let's reflect on what we've done in 2023. Not a bad idea. So in this time of darkness and quiet, let's just take in the fact that God loves us and he gives us the Holy Spirit to fight the good fight that needs to be fought. Dice, hermano, que es tiempo de buscar un momento de silencio, eh, de reflexionar en esta temporada del Adviento, de lo que hemos dicho, lo que hemos hecho en, el, en, el, en este año. Y qué bonito que podamos reflexionar y meditar en todo lo que Dios ha mostrado, su misericordia, para que podamos continuar luchando esta batalla espiritual eh, entre el bien y el mal, pero siempre con la armadura de Dios. Uh -huh. That's it, I think. We've, we've, we've finished another show. We've talked about Paul again and... And, and so I'm really thankful. I love his letters from Thessalonians. I mean, they're, they're really, to me, is a, is a very powerful preaching that he does. Dice el hermano que le encantó las estructuras bíblicas del apóstol Pablo a la comunidad tesalónica, que lo tocó muchísimo, y esperamos que el día de hoy, pues, esta lectura bíblica realmente sea que nada pueda separarnos del amor de Dios. Nada, ningún sufrimiento, nada de lo que podamos vivir, nada, nada ni nadie. Acuérdense que estamos, somos hijos de Dios, Tenemos el Espíritu Santo y que siempre Dios sea glorificado en nuestras vidas. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And then we're going to say our Father, Father. Yep. before we leave. Yep. So our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Dios me lo bendiga a todos. Que pasen buenas noches y feliz fin de semana. Capleses. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.